Hey guys, Tommy with Elevation every weekend. Uh, today we're going to ride a trail called Mammoth Gulch in Colorado. It's just outside of Rollinsville. Uh, just a little ways from the uh, trailhead right now. I just wanted to stop and show you a quick scenic view. Uh, we're going to get uh, over to the trailhead and get geared up and get going in a second. This is a real popular recreational area. Uh, lots of camping and there's uh, some other trails and whatnot in the area. Um, but just want to show you real quick. This is an old Rollinsville uh, schoolhouse and uh, it's uh, one of the scenic features of the uh, area. And uh, behind us uh, is the James Peak Wilderness Area, including James Peak, which is a 13er. It's 13,300 feet, just about, um, which is where we'll be heading towards on Mammoth Gulch. Today we're gonna be back on the Surly Ice Cream Truck, so uh, that should be a good workout. Uh, according to my Garmin, we're starting at a little over 9,000 feet right now, and I know uh, the trail goes well above tree line, which in Colorado is 11, about 11,000 feet. Uh, so it's definitely going to be a hard day of climbing, uh, but we're going to get it going. I know this, I have ridden this trail in part on my full suspension bike a couple years ago. I do remember it being pretty steep, uh, pretty chunky in places, but it is a four by four type trail. You can do it on, you know, pretty much any high clearance vehicle and uh, there are tougher spots where you definitely want uh, something uh, more capable, but it's definitely a steeper trail. It's not railroad grade like uh, some of the other trails in the area uh, and that I've featured on this channel. So we're going to get uh, get the bike put together, get geared up and get, get rolling. As you can see, uh, we do have clouds already, uh, so I'm not sure uh, how far we'll get because they're already starting to get a little thick and dark, but we'll get what we can get. All right, guys, we are on our way. We're still on the main entry road right now. The uh, entry to Mammoth Gulch is actually just up here on this hill. And it gets steep right away. So uh, it'll warm the legs up pretty quick. Right now, my air pressure is a little high. I might uh, need to adjust that soon. But we'll give it a go first. You can always take more out, so. As you can see, we are right into it. Hey guys, making our quick uh, first stop. I just took a couple PSI out of the tires. Again, they were high to start. Always better to start high and let a little bit out. This trail is a lot rougher than uh, Boreas Pass, which I did last week. Uh, so it's, it's definitely uh, needs to lower air pressure right off the bat. Uh, but a nice scenic view already. We'll turn it around here in just a second so you can see. So there's the view. As you can see down there, uh, there's the roadway and the schoolhouse that uh, we showed you earlier. So we've already uh, climbed a good bit. And there's a nice view of the mountains. Rollins Pass actually runs uh, kind of right across this area right here and continues on. Um, might be one we do in the future. I've done that one before. It's a railroad grade, long, but uh, pretty, uh, pretty mild. And then again, another view of James Peak and the surrounding mountains. We're gonna hop on here and try to make some time. Again, clouds are still building, so uh, this is where we're heading. Had a brief, mild section. Now we're gonna get right back up into the climbing. So I'll show you another minute of that. But it is steep here. Mosquitoes and flies are terrible. So another reason to keep moving. But yeah, definitely gonna burn some calories today on this one. I don't think we're gonna be getting the summit though, because those clouds are already looking like rain. And once you get up above tree line, if they turn into storms, it's bad news. All right, we'll uh, check back in shortly. Not gonna be able to talk much climbing. I just wanted to show some of this rocky tech stuff. There's tons of this on this trail. It's pretty rough. You guys taking a real quick break. Uh, sweat's pouring off me. That's where we're coming from. I know the uh, camera doesn't really depict steepness of slope, but uh, it's definitely steep. I'm definitely working. Still have a couple more gears left on my cassette though, so hopefully we'll be okay. All right, gonna get back at it. Hey guys, still climbing a little over two miles in, sweating hard, working hard. It's still very steep, not the steepest parts, but it's steep. 
But this uh, bike, especially this drivetrain, is just doing awesome. I'm still not in my uh, biggest gear, which is that 51 tooth on the 1x12 Shimano SLX. I think the gear I'm in now is a 45. It's doing the job. So we're going to keep at it. According to my Garmin, we're over 10,000 feet. Trees are definitely getting smaller as we approach that tree line. Feeling pretty good. It's uh, one of the things I've always found in all my years of riding at elevation, especially hiking big mountains, 14ers. I seem to always struggle the most in that first 30 to 60 minutes. And it seems like I settle in, my system adapts to the elevation, and I find a decent groove. And right now, that's where we're at. I'm gonna stop here in a second and give you a stunning view. All right guys, taking a quick break and just wanted to check out this view uh, before we get back at it. Uh, fortunately, it's not windy. And I guess one benefit to the cloud cover is it'd probably be uh, 10 or 15 degrees warmer if the sun was blazing down on me. As it is, it's warm and humid and I'm sweating pretty good. So that's the upside, unfortunately. Uh, if the clouds keep coming, it's probably going to cut us short, but I'm going to spin you around here and give you a better view of this uh, scenery because it's uh, pretty stunning. And here it is. That's where we just came from. And that's where we're heading. All right, we're going to saddle up and get, get going again. Bike is working really well. Still haven't hit that big gear in the back yet. So hopefully uh, we won't need it, but if we do, I know there's some really steep stuff further up that was pretty much unrideable for me last time on my full suspension bike, but I wasn't quite in the shape I'm in now. And that bike is a one by 11. So it doesn't have quite the range that this bike has, so, or the traction. I actually did a video several weeks ago about this bike and how well it climbs. Uh, I'll definitely link that down below and at the end screen. But this bike is actually an epic climber due to the insane amount of traction you get and the gear, the gear range on this 1x12. It's a great combination. Not going to be a fast climber, but it will do it. And it'll climb where a lot of other bikes either run out of gear or the gear overpowers the traction due to smaller tires. Okay, back to work. off-road traffic coming it's Pumas and Jeeps I was mentioning the traction that these tires have when aired down a little bit and it's great on climbing but as I'm finding out on this ride it's also awesome when I'm on this off camber side hill type stuff I can literally go right up I have to avoid a rock or something. I can go right up the side hill, incline, and maintain traction, which is something most mountain bikes would not be capable of. And that's all due to the contact patch with the big tires. So you start to get closer and closer to the tree line. I do remember it getting really steep. Some switchbacks. All right, keeping it going. Definitely warming up with that sun though. All right guys, uh, we're coming up on about five miles in, making good progress. Um, just stop the clip bar. I'm gonna give you a quick view here. Zooming in here, I don't know if that's gonna come out. But that is, that road right there is Rollins Pass. We've already uh, climbed about 1,600 feet. 
looking to the left a little bit, that is James Peak right there, which is the tallest mountain in the area. It's again about 13.3. Uh, so we're headed that way and uh, hoping we'll make good progress. Still really steep and rocky. Another good thing about this bike I've noticed in this type of terrain, I'm not really having any pedal strikes. Once in a while you have to select, selectively, you know, pick your way and place a pedal. Do a little kickback. Generally speaking, almost no pedal strikes. Looks like the seasonal gate is open, which is what I expected. I'm gonna keep at it. So I was just saying, definitely getting rougher through here. Lots of bigger, loose rocks still climbing, which makes it challenging and technical. But this bike just rolls over it all. You still have to pick your lines, but it's a lot more forgiving than a smaller tire bike would be, that's for sure even without suspension. I will say it is nice to have these super aggressive tires on and not something more dirt oriented and summer oriented. Got the Surly Bud and Lou on still, the stock tires that came on the bike. Very aggressive, bright in the snow. But they're also really good in this kind of stuff. Stopping to check in real quick, still rocky and steep. I wanted to show you this view real quick. It's a nice, View the mountains, but you can also see cloud cover building up. That's where we're headed. Still steep and rocky, getting rougher and rougher. Bike's still eating it up. We're getting closer and closer to the tree line though, because trees are falling away and getting smaller. It's also getting softer up here too, which is a factor in the rock, rocks being loose. And there's nothing better in soft stuff than a fat bike. All right, guys, above tree line, six and a quarter miles in, almost 2,400 feet of elevation gain. Hopefully you're getting a little bit of a view there, but uh, getting really windy up here. So I'm hopefully uh, standing with my back to the wind. It isn't too bad, but uh, super steep, super rocky, super loose. I uh, have had to walk a couple sections here and there uh, usually when i lose momentum because i have traffic coming so i'm gonna hop back on and try to keep it going i am in the big gear now it's still pretty impressive but we're uh, still working on it Got a brief shield from the wind, so I figured I'd stop real quick just to talk. Uh, it's definitely beautiful up here. That's where we just came from. Getting darker and darker that way. Still have some pretty nice views. This is where we're heading, and around that corner, there's a switchback, if you can call it that but it's a big, steep, long grade. Uh, this is uh, the furthest I've been on this trail, so I'm not really sure what to expect beyond this point, uh, but we're gonna try to keep going. Uh, ice cream truck is still killing it. Still working on it, guys. The wind's brutal. It's been mostly a headwind climbing in, so not very pleasant. We're gonna try to keep going. And it's all this technical riding too. Loose, rocky, steep, headwind. It's definitely a workout. All right guys, I think we're gonna have to pull the plug now.
So we're gonna turn around and probably air down the tires a little bit. And we're gonna start working on that now. All right, we're all aired down. So the trail does continue up. It is really steep. And like I said, we're riding right into uh, all that. Uh, so I'm gonna try to not do that since we're well above tree line already and still got a uh, long ways to go. All right, about to start heading uh, all the way back down. I just got around the corner here where the wind, got a little shelter from the wind so I can talk for a second, but trying to beat that on the way down. One thing I will say real quick about uh, the, uh, this bike here is this uh, 1x12 a Shimano SLX drivetrain. It does have uh, the lockout on the uh, derailleur, so we should have a lot less uh, chain slap and things like that on the way down. Uh, if you did watch my last video with uh, the Summit of Boreas Pass and the Pugsley, that's one of the things I mentioned that that older drivetrain did not have that lockout, and I was getting a ton of chain slap. So hopefully this will be better. We'll, we'll test it out. But uh, that's where we're heading. All right, we are rolling. So we got seven and a half miles on the clock now. So we're gonna do pretty much all that back down on the upside. The downside is a lot faster. me a little bit at least hopefully I can talk but uh yeah no chain slap at all drive train seems rock solid with that lockout on so that's pretty awesome yeah this bike is designed to be a trail bike so it can take some chunky conditions making progress one of these days come back up here I want to see where that one goes Really rough stuff it does feel better having a, a through axle bike like this versus last week's bike on Boris Pass the Pugsley which is still running uh, skewers
All right, guys, last little bit here before we get back to the truck. I will say this, as much as I love these fat tires and they do a great job in a number of ways performing as far as traction and providing a type of suspension on a descent like this, which is steep, very fast, very rough, even these tires can't uh, perform like a well-tuned, high-quality suspension does. Front suspension fork on this might, might make all the difference, though versus a full suspension bike, so it might be just enough. That's where I'm really feeling it, is in the, uh, the front and the handlebars, so I'm not really noticing issues in the back. All right guys, loaded up and rolling out. So uh, if you made it this far in the video, thanks for taking the time to watch. And uh, if you have any questions or comments, leave them down, down below. I always respond to all my comments. And uh, if you wanna keep following um, my fat biking and uh, my uh, high elevation series that I seem to have going on, uh, like I said, please subscribe to the channel. It really helps out the channel. Uh, thank you very much and have a great day.